So, um, good afternoon. Um, since my lovable and supportive groupmates aren't here, they're in vacation in Boracay. I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be presenting this lovable presentation, the Asian Palm Civet of the Tongtong River. I am Christine Mekapulong, and my oh, groupmates are you. Justin Andre Cabangon, Mark Jason Aquino, and Federico Jr. Sevilla. So what is an Asian palm civet? How is it important to our ecosystem? What has our team done so far? All and more as we proceed through this presentation. The civet cat is not only an interesting topic to research on, but studies have not come across much often. From this taxonomy, it, its family is Viverdae with its genus Paradoxus and its species Hermaphroditus. It is also native to the, to the Southeast Asia. Um, see in this... Um, <laughs> Um, see here is it is um, the civet cat uh, can be found from the tips of the Indian continent up up until the regions of Malays. Um, it is a seed dispersal agent, which is actually one of the most important agents in the ecosystem. It also gives us more reason to protect our Dongtung River. Um, here, this is actually the feces of civet cat. Looks like coffee beans. Um, studies show that um, the civet can be found in rainforests and shrub areas. But since there are suburban sub areas, um, it can also be found in rooftops. They are also omnivores. Um, they eat certain, well, they're primar primarily frugivores. So they eat plants like this coffee plant and this banana or sabak. Um, there's also anecdotal sightings in our, well, near our school and river that the civet cat was chasing chickens near the, by the river. So it also claims that it is an omnivore. They are nocturnal creatures, meaning they are seen at night. They sleep at day. And they are solitary. Um, and they only interact during mating season. Um, even if the status, its status is least concerned, um, we are still worried for their, for our local populations in the Tungtung River. Um, as I've said before, there are anecdotal sightings of civet cat, and this inspired us to conduct this study to scientifically confirm these sightings in the Tungtung River. Also, we would measure the morphometric details of the civet cats and to apply the marker capture method. Um, this study, um, the civet cats, it's actually their first time to, to be studied in our Tungtung River Conservation Project. This could also give um, uh, students um, some interest if they want to, um, if they want to study this um, topic. This also forces us to be aware of their vital capability in preserving our river watershed. Yeah, that's Tungtung River. Um, this is the area of our study. This is Beverly Hills. Um, this point here is where we, where my groupmate, when he was, when he was just solo, uh, my groupmate found the civic cat. 
This is our second area of study, which is in Maharlika Hills. And this is the residence, the resident of my group mate, which we found we caught three female civet cats. This is the field protocol. Um, first, we bring the cage to the pre-selected trap site um, and apply the book impression pad, which I'll explain later. And we document, we record of our setting up. And we place the bait inside the trap, which is, we usually use banana for our bait. And we double check every two hours. Um, this is in by the Tungtung River. Um, this is the pre-selected trap site. Usually, we choose trap sites due to anecdotal sightings. So, from our manongs in the Tungtung River, um, they have seen, at, I think at night, civet cats roaming around this place. That's why. Justin, my roommate, chose this place. Uh, this is the pug impression pad. Okay. This is actually this is a close up. This is actually the sawdust. We use sawdust. The pug impression pad is for in case if we don't catch a civet, um, at least we'll we know that they've they they um, at least they've stepped on that <laughs> pug impression pad. At least we know if there's a paw print, at least we know that they're there. Uh, but although we tried, we tried to do the pug impression, we had a few mistakes and we weren't able to have any pug impressions. This is the bait itself. I mean the cage itself. And this is the weight. That's the back. And this is our customized cage. The whole setup with the bait. And that's the pug impression pad. And the measurements. This is actually based on a rodent's cage. I mean, uh, rat traps. And it's just only in a bigger size. Um, the lab protocol, we first sedate the civet cat. We need a veterinarian to do this. Um, we weigh it and we measure its morphometric details. This is its ear. We measure the head, the tail, and uh, about the teeth. This um, states that this civet is actually around 11 months old, well, according to the veterinarian. But since he's not an expert on civets, he's not sure if it's correct because it's from the wild. Then we spray some yellow paint in the left hind leg and we release it. Um, for the results, um, as you can see here, there is no there is no measurement for the male. Uh, let's just say it ran away. <laughs> yeah, it ran away. It, I don't know what happened because I heard screaming, civet cat, civet cat everywhere, and well, I don't know what happened. Uh, Okay, the last the last female is a juvenile, and we've caught three of them. Um, since due that we don't have uh, recaptured civets, um, we can only make a smart guess on their population size. So here is its territorial range. This is site one, meaning that's the first. That's the first. That that's the first site where we where Justin caught his civet cat, 
and this is the territorial range of a male civet. Um, from my research, um, there's the African civet is polygynous, meaning the male uh, mates with more than three females or three or more females. Um, so we base it on the male civet because it's it's larger than the females, and. Um, Um, from from my research, um, since there are no recaptures, as I've said, um, we cannot determine the population, right? Yes, that means that we we cannot determine whether the population is 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 small or large, right? So um, we look at this um, range, and as you can see from here, on the left side portion, there is not enough, um, um, what do you call this, um, habitat where they can live, so to speak. It's more of a residential area. And here, um, it's more of green. Okay. According to Bea Cabilis, there is such a term called a corridor. Um, so I, uh, we, we assume that the civet uh, might have come from, uh, from different places up, upwards. And I think the, we, um, that the civet is not it, it it roams around in this place but since it's okay never mind sorry um, these are these are our citations and thank you for listening So this time, anybody would like to ask a question? Yeah, there's one there. Okay. Um, good afternoon. I'm Milton Medina, R&D of ACN. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate your work. It's very superb, and I think it would contribute to the conservation of the Philippine biodiversity, especially the society. Um, my question is, I mean, you mentioned earlier that you are more uh, concerned with, uh, with the local population of the society. Uh, my question is, what measures so far, or any programs, or uh, plans, to address this? Um, Do you have any uh, programs that would lead to the conservation of, of the Saibit Khan, aside from your study? Thank you. I don't think so. Because <laughs> we're, uh, it's, it's new, eh? And we're still, we're still catching, we still need to catch more civets to make an estimated population. So I think only the Tung Tung River is Tung Tung, Tung Tung River Conservation Project can be well. It's the only one available in our in our school. Yes, one more. The last question. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Sir Aris of UP Baguio. Uh, I also like to congratulate all of the presenters on the, uh, the high school, especially, especially to your effort, to your passion also to do biodiversity work, and of course to the advisor who had been yearly uh, bringing students to the WCSP and presenting all of this. But I would just like to say, also my 
my dream before, but since I work in the university now, so I train uh, college students. But I, uh, to also give you more credit to your work, especially to, to high school students, I, my recommendation for the next batch probably of students would be um, to refine more of your objectives, and this is still science. And I'm, um, I'd like also that your data would be soon be published and all of that. that. This may just be preliminary studies, but they are first studies in your place and to graduate also the efforts on the Tuntong River. So since you've been communicating with experts, many names have been mentioned a while ago uh, on biodiversity. So probably you could ask them to check your methodology and all of that so they did be refined so that your conclusions would be more accepted and correct based on the methodology that you have. And, and again, congratulations. Okay, so that ends the presentation of the high school category. But first of all, just would like to agree that